fair to say that the last 24 hours, 48 hours have been seismic in football. I've tried as much as possible to keep City fans abreast of everything that's going on. We heard from Kevin Parker, who's the General Secretary of the Supporters Club, before City ended up pulling out of the European Super League. Here now is Dante Friend, who's the leader, certainly one of the organisers, of the 1894 group, which is a group of fans who concern themselves principally about atmosphere inside the stadium, but also care, of course, very, very passionately about City. Here's his reaction to the whole story, the way it's evolved, and the future of the relationship between the City fans and the club. Uh, I think we really need to just pause and take it all in for a number of reasons. We don't know why they signed up for this. We don't know who signed off on it. It would have been the biggest mistake that owners could ever make. It would have destroyed football in this country and we'd have been one of those guilty parties. Uh, so relief initially. Uh, we don't know why they did it. Uh, I've seen things on the internet, oh, it was all a plan to break the cartel and this sort of thing. I mean, I think that's a bit fanciful thinking. Um, I think that you know fans weren't consulted uh, and if for one second they'd have took heed of any supporter, they wouldn't have got off the ground. The players clearly didn't want it uh, and they didn't understand the worldwide reaction to it. And it's, let's remember, this has come from grassroots fans. We've been lobbying um, government, shadow cabinet, doing all sorts. And there's a lot of us you know, Kev Parker, the official sports club, years of experience, never put a foot wrong, knows how to sort of play it with authorities. There's a lot of football fans out there in the, in the city supporters base need to wake up and not just like, let's just watch a fan cam and talk about the game and stuff. You actually need to understand when you're being played, when you're being used. We have a decision at 1894 to make, which is what sort of relationship do we want with the club? Do we, why are we spending our spare time working on displays, trying to improve the atmosphere, where clearly people at board level, not the club and not people at lower level, people at ownership level, board level, clearly couldn't give two hoots what we do with supporters or what we think. You know, when we ask for price freezes, when we ask for better conditions for fans, nothing happens. So we need to think, well, are we going to go down the supporters' trust kind of route because there's battles with UEFA to come? The guy from UEFA, Seth Riddy, he got in touch and said, uh, you know, can you support us? No, we don't support your stupid changes either. You know, UEFA have had us over for years. So fans need to wake up. It's not about, oh, I've got, a, a, you know, um, how many likes can I get on Twitter and this, that and the other. Get involved. Get involved and make a difference. We, we are stronger when we have the fan base backing us, the fan base, you know, rallied around us. They, they, they appreciate the fact that we kind of took distance from the club and that, that's on pause still. So we need to, we said to the club, you need to con consult with fans. We need to do the same. We need to consult with our members and say, what sort of organisation do you want? Because, you know, there'll be some people in our organisation that just want to do displays and there'll be others that just want to, actually make sure this we, we as a club don't put ourselves in this position ever again. And that means getting through to the owners. Would you, an apology from Caldoun or Soriano, you want to know who was involved for, for months on this, like Sunes said last night, this was all planned months in advance, kept quiet. I think we know who it might be, it's Pep's mate, but, um, you know, thankfully they stepped back from the brink but um, I mean, he used to say that it, it wouldn't resurrect itself in a few years' time. We as fans need to be ready for that. Are you obviously not happy with City still? I mean, some some of the fan base is saying they did the right thing by pulling out. They were hesitant to go in, in, in the first place. And others are saying, we'll never forget this. And it sounds like you're more on that, that side and, and now don't yeah, trust City well, like you once did. Yeah, you're talking City. I'm talking the owners. I'm talking to people. So basically, if the owners leave tomorrow, someone else takes over. It's still the club. We still love City. So I'm not slagging off City. I'm saying the owners have made have done brilliant things for the city and made us competitive. But this is the first time where there's been a wake up call to say when you have owners who have complete control, they could do this sort of thing. 
they've been no better than the Glazers or no better than John Henry in this situation. And that's the wake-up call to say, well, if we have this model, this is... There, there are other fan groups who are saying, let's go down this German 50 plus one. I mean, me and Kev Parker on a call this morning, we cannot turn around. We're not going to turn around and say, oh, we think Mansour should go now. And this sort of thing. What we see is we need an apology to the fan base, an explanation of what's happened here. Um, you know, we, we, we were... Um, you, 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 there could be a lot of spin, you know. City so done a lot of spin the last 48 hours. Oh, well, we were just following the other clubs, or, you know, we don't really want the competition. We were last in, we were first out, you know. We still went through this process and it's left the fans feeling quite hurt. We could have done what Bayern did. We could have just sat back and said, you block get on with it, we'll just take a, a watching view. Bayern didn't do it because the fans still have quite a big say in that, you know. Um, having said that, Real Madrid kind of fan ownership and Barcelona, there's a lot of fans have a big say in that and they still went ahead with it. So it's about a place where the, the city supporters are listened to and their views took on board by fans. So again, we set this up to be like trying to improve the atmosphere, but you're only going to get so far if the owners aren't going to listen. And, um, you know, so we've got some thinking to do ourselves. Uh, the easiest thing in the world for us to say, like, can't be bothered, let someone else do it. You know, there's people in our group who've lost relationships over it. It's affected the, the, the private life and the, we get criticism on social media. And the people have not got a clue what we have to do and go through. And um, again, I'll just say on record as well, he's got the most difficult job in the world, Kev Parker, who's from the official supporters club. He had to sort of uh, be very careful. His experience, you know, we lent on that as well. And you know, City fans have got a real gem in Kev um, who, who kind of knows how to sort of work with other fan groups and other authorities. And uh, if people knew what, what people did behind the scenes, they'd be, be amazed, you know. If you care about Manchester City and you like the work that I do, then please subscribe. It's free. Follow me on social media, at Ian Cheeseman on Twitter. And if you're somebody who wants to sponsor the work that I do, please get in contact because I can't carry on without your support. Hope you enjoyed the video. And remember, even in these times, it's always great to be a blue.